Hello and a warm welcome once again to the Embassy World 8-Ball Pool Championships for 1998. We're once again at the Stackis Hotel in Blackpool and we're down to the Blue Ribbon event, the men's individual event. Now this one really is the big one. And just to give you some idea of how many players try to play in this tournament, we've had thousands from all over the world trying to compete to qualify for this tournament. Here in Blackpool we've had over 100 players and I was talking earlier with some of them. They play up to 35 frames a day just to get to the quarterfinal stages and that's where we are right now, just eight players left. Let's take a look at who we've got. Up first, it's the current world champion, Rob McKenna of Wales, up against a relative unknown, Philip Grundy, but also from Wales. Robert Brady from Ireland plays Keith Brewer, the England captain. Then there's Lee Kendall from England up against Craig Reynolds from Telford. Jason Twist, very much in form at the moment, up against his fellow countryman, Carl Morris. So that's the quarter-final lineup, and with me in the studio is Keith Brewer, the captain of the England team, and massive success, of course, in the team championships. But Keith, it has to be fair to say, arguably the world's number one player, but you've never really had the luck in the individuals, have you? No, that's right. Um, the World Championship is always the most prestigious event we've got. It's like our flagship that we carry. Um, and it's been very successful over the last couple of years, and each year it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, but when we kind of first played in it, like I was like the red-hot favourite to win the event, and um, there was much expected of me, and I expected much of myself as well. Um, but it didn't quite happen. And the last couple of years I haven't made it through to the TV stage, but this year I feel I'm like a little bit more relaxed than what I have been in previous years, and I'm enjoying my game better. Briefly, anybody you pick out as a quarter-finalist hot player at the moment? Well, the two unknowns. We've got two amateurs. Obviously, we've got Phil Grundy and uh, Robert Brady, who are kind of like the new players to the scene. But uh, the, the player that's caught my eye this week, actually, and queuing quite well, is Jason Twist, my, my fellow England countryman. He's been playing very well, so he's one to watch out for. Finally, Keith, we've been talking all week about the youngsters coming through in the game of pool, and we really have been seeing some excellent players at 18 years old. But for you, getting on a little bit, how important is this event to you? Because you really were dominant in this game, and not perhaps so in the last few years yeah it's um, it's very hard to explain but um, I've been very fortunate in my career that um, I've won just about every major title there has been and this is the only one that's kind of eluded me and then like this is my sixth attempt now and they're already calling me the Jimmy White of pool so it's a good comparison but uh, it's one of the things I'm not going to try and worry about it too much I mean for every every person that plays in a sport you want to be the world champion and obviously that's my ultimate goal and it's nice to be still involved in the event this year, and obviously uh, I've still got a chance while I'm there. All right, well, Keith Brewer has got a chance, of course, both in the individuals and the team competition. We'll see him in action later, but let's turn our attention now to our first quarter final and profile the two players playing. Well, it doesn't need to be said much about Rob McKenna, the man from Wales. He's won the World Championship twice now, back in 94, and, of course, the last year's champion. Owns his own pool hall in Cardiff itself, and he certainly is the hot favourite. As for his opponent, Philip Grundy, well, very little is known about him, the man from Bromborough. He's also a Welshman and uh, is very excited, of course, about playing in his first quarter-final event, the first time he's ever got anywhere close to this sort of uh, level. Very pleased to be in the team. It has to be said, though, he's the Merseyside captain and has played for the Welsh team earlier this year in the European Championships. It's made me quite nervous and I've done better than I've expected to do. Um, I've got a pretty daunting task in the quarter-finals against Bob McKenna. But um, I've got nothing to lose, to be quite honest, so I'm just going to do my best. I haven't, I haven't seen anybody that I'm afraid of or anybody that's played as well as me in the tournament so far, so I, I'm really not concerned about anybody. I'm just concerned about Rob McKenna. So a definite fighting talk by both men there. Philip's got nothing to lose, he says, and of course Rob McKenna, as confident as ever, going for his third title. I had a quick chance to talk to Philip before he uh, went down to the floor, and he actually is very, very confident indeed. He hasn't played on the big tables before, but he says that this week he's played the five best matches he's ever played in pool. So, can't be set up better than that. Let's go down to the floor now for our MC once again, Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, together into the arena, will you welcome, please, Phil Grundy and the reigning NBC World 8 Ball Pool Champion, Rob McKenna. Welcome back to Blackpool. We're down to the business end now in the men's singles, the quarterfinals. This is where the tough get going because the going obviously has gotten tough. It's David versus Goliath in our first quarterfinal here. 
Rob McKenna, the defending world champion, up against the relative unknown Phil Grundy. The break off by McKenna. And now Grundy at the table. Choice of reds or yellows, whichever he prefers. And the early going here is going to tell a tall tale. Very important for Philip Grundy to settle into this match as quickly as he can. He's got to keep McKenna in his sights. Good attacking shot that one early, developing the eight ball. Very clear in his mind that he wants to attack McKenna. Long ways out with that attempt, though. Great balls in play. <laughs> McKenna now coming to the table, brimming with confidence, as you saw in the pre-match interviews. He feels he's the man to beat here. And he's playing as well as anybody in the world. McKenna with reds on. It's going to take some good potting, but I can assure you that the reigning world champion is one of the best potters in the world in the small tables. Great shot right there. Great start from McKenna, just what he was looking to do. When you're a heavy favorite in a match, you've got to assert your authority. Obviously, we will have a look at that unique hairstyle that McKenna possesses. There it is, the red, the yellow. The hairstyle is developing that for this very tournament. And what a dream start this is for Rob McKenna. One visit was all it took. At least that's what McKenna would have liked. Possibly an early sign of nerves from the world champion. Missed that by some ways. Totally unexpected. Grundy trying to put pay to that bad miss from McKenna. Very important to punish the champion's mistakes. I'm talking about mistakes and this game of eight ball pool. I'm very happy to be joined in this quarterfinal by former England international and in fact the organizer of the Embassy UK Tour, Mr. Alan Bartlett. And Alan, we talked before the outset here, how important it was for Philip Grundy to get off the mark and show some early confidence. Yes, Jim, thank you. He's, he had one opportunity earlier, and he chose to play the yellow down the cushion instead of into the middle. And Rob cleared up brilliantly to the black, and he's given Philip an opportunity he didn't expect. And if he can take these as he should, what sort of effect will that have on McKenna? And that looks good. He's got to hold himself together and concentrate on the one pot. He got a second bite of the cherry, and didn't he do well? Phil Grundy from Wales takes the opening frame here in this test of 17 quarter final. He leads the reigning world champion, Rob McKenna, by one frame to nil. And this yellow, once he saw that disappear, and didn't go into the center of the pocket, but finished nicely onto the eight ball. And I'm sure very happy to get off the mark early in this one. 
But Rob McKenna, cause for concern. That was a bad miss on an eight ball that I'm sure he would knock in 20 out of 20 times given the opportunity. But the man of the moment, Phil Grundy. Second frame. Phil He'll be breaking frame. off here in frame two. Nil. Trying to keep the pressure down on McKenna. Open time. No friends off the break, Alan. No, it's a big key to this game. You must pop balls off the break. But having said that, the yellows look open, but McKenna doesn't look to have an easy one to start. Well, he's found a plant, but he's left the red ball in the jaw. He must take yellows, because he potted a yellow. And the balls are very much in Grundy's favour. He's playing the back double on the yellow. And he's failed to cover the pocket, so Grundy has a good chance to take a two-frame lead. Just talking to Philip Grundy before the outset here again as we see the double missed double from McKenna. <laughs> failing to block the pocket as well. Grundy was really looking forward to this. He felt as though all the pressure was on McKenna. This obviously the highlight to his career. He's played in the European Championships before, but never at the televised stages of this nature. No better way to enjoy yourself than to get off the mark well and start potting some good ones. Well, he's just got one bad ball. It's the red by the side cushion. He'll not want to make a plant of that ball. He captains the Merseyside A pool team, does Phil Grundy. I knew little about him, but I know enough about the sports people in Merseyside that if he's captain in their team, he's got to be a good player. They take Paul very seriously. And now this is his key ball. If he can get to this red ball over the pocket and get good position, one of the last two, and he's playing the plant. He's played that well. How unlucky has he been? Can he see this other red? It looks like he just can. Well, he's certainly going the scenic route on some of these finishes. But if Phil Grundy can get on this black, his confidence is going to go up Another couple of notches. Hasn't he done well? Man on a mission. Simple eight ball deposited. Phil Grundy now leading Rob McKenna by two frames to nil. It's a race to nine, remember. Early days, but the champion in trouble. Rob McKenna to break, trading two frames to nil. Yellow down off the break, that means it's an open table. <coughs> Once again, the break off, such a potent weapon here. An eight ball pool. Very important to get one off the break. You get to establish position on. early on. Red ball's in play. Noticeable movement there by McKenna. Looks like a very nervous yeah, player right now. And if he keeps giving Grundy this many chances, Grundy's confidence is going to start to soar. 
And that's saying it isn't already. As Jim Riley pointed out, McKenna's got to dig his heels in. And he proved he was willing to there. I think he was just putting the red over the corner pocket. But he didn't have enough pace. I spoke to Rob this morning. And he said that he would be consciously giving Grundy much respect. Well, it's easy to say that, but he is expected to win this game. And one gets the feeling he's suddenly realised that he's in a match. It's not the greatest of shots. The yellow ball should have been over the pocket, but it's done enough to block the corner. Well, there's one of the Irish players, Thomas Kinsella with a baby, a future champion. He obviously enjoyed uh, McKenna's shot there, Jim. Well, I don't know about you, Alan, but I'm very impressed by the way that Phil Grundy is going about things here. As nervous as he looked before this match started, he looks very focused to me. And I just get the feeling he's starting to fancy this a little bit. Potted the yellow there, but I think he was really trying to dislodge the awkwardly placed one at the bottom of the table. Just sandwiched between those two reds, bottom right. Foul. Two misses. Well, he's given two shots away there. But the problem is that he's put the white ball behind the yellow, and thus Rob can't see both sides of any of his balls, and thus he can bring the white ball back behind the line. This gives Rob two visits still. So we'll see him attempt to clear the three balls the top end of the table and leave the two visits for the one awkward red. He'll be trying to get as close to this last red. Well he hasn't. He's left quite a bit of diff quite a bit of distance. He's a lot to play with. He'll just be clipping off the side, bumping the yellow away. Well done from Rob McKenna. This is certainly the tonic for what ails him. Gets the eight and with it takes his first frame of this match. He still trails Phil Grundy by two frames to one, but at least the world champion is off the mark. He'll be very pleased to get the first frame on the board. Two frames to one. He's Phil. quite aware of the situation, Rob. He's had the first frame. He's passed it over to Phil. He knows the chances will come. He's just got to take them. Phil so Grundy breaking off again there, Alan. And once again, nothing finding its way to pockets. If he continually does that, Jimmy just can't win. Rob McKenna will just live off that all day. Red ball's in play. Yes, the red's ideally situated on the table. And McKenna's going after the most difficult one right now on the left-hand side. Now, we're only too familiar with what an attacking style McKenna possesses and what a brilliant potter he is. Now, in the final matches here, they've moved to a four-foot by eight-foot table for the singles. And McKenna's been practicing some snooker to get ready for the long potting. He didn't really want to take this ball so early. That was his saviour in case he got out of position. And when he did get out of position, he had to take it earlier than expected. <laughs> but the key point is what Jim said. He's taking the more difficult balls first whenever he can. There's the hairstyle again. The red, the yellow, and you will get another look at it. 
There's another spot there that's got a question mark on it. McKenna wants that to be this year's championship. He's got dates on the red and yellow for the two years that he won the world championship. This eight, and McKenna has leveled accounts here now. Two frames apiece with Phil Grundy in this best of 17 quarterfinal. The champion starting to look every bit like the favorite here in this event. And there again, you can see the red, yellow, and the eight ball. He wants to be able to fill in 1998 right there. But the last red to be followed by the eight gets McKenna back on level pegging with Phil Grundy, the outsider. And what's more, McKenna breaking off here in frame five. And this time he turns it right over to Grundy. Open table. Open table as Phil comes to the table. And once again, another look at McKenna's break. Normally a very good weapon for him. Just one of those instances where you need to be a little lucky off the break. The players are practicing the break now. They've realized how important it is to pop balls. Red balls in play. He's not found ideal position. I know it's a famous commentator saying, but this is an important frame. He cannot let McKenna start to dominate. And he's slidding off. Two visits. Obviously misjudged that one because he got the red. And he's starting to look a little bit edgier now. Surprising, really. You would have thought him being a little bit nervous at the start and settling in. He got off to such a dream start in this quarterfinal. He tried to use the yellow to hold on the red. And he's gone in off it. And these balls look quite difficult. And McKenna's developed one of the bad ones. And will he move the other bad one the next shot? The yellow ball there next to the black. That's the one he'll want to be using his two shots on. Well, ideally, he'd like to get it out before then, but if need be, that's the one he'll want to use the two shots on. And having run out of position, not been able to pop, he's going to use it now. This is what I really like about McKenna, though. He takes the bull by the horns, attacks the table and the balls. He plays with such supreme confidence that it has to be offsetting for his opponent. He just plays the game as though he has no respect for whoever has sat in the chair. He has an arrogance when he's walking around the table. But he's certainly got the ability to back that arrogance up and a couple titles along with it. Certainly. He's left that a little more awkward than he would have liked. But the natural angle is going to be bringing the cue ball back down for the eight. A little bit of right hand side on the white ball there. And is he on the black? Just up there. Great visit there from McKenna. Starting to stamp his authority on this quarterfinal. He's won the last three frames, and from 2 0 down, he's transformed that into a 3 2 advantage. Rob McKenna from Wales doing the business. Good shot, this one on the last yellow, bringing the cue ball off the bottom cushion for the eight ball. Looking a lot more relaxed and a lot more confident is Rob McKenna. And now Phil Grundy has to try and fire some rockets right back at the world champion. Six frame, Phil Grundy to We're in the frame two. that one might say is very important as far as Grundy is concerned. He's got to stop the rot right here now. Yellow balls in play, <coughs> yellow balls pot, sorry. Sixth frame, trailing 3-2, vital for Grundy, as you see the break off yet again. 
to try and get one back. Yellow balls in play. Both options look possible with these chosen yellows. <coughs> 30 seconds. Not certain if uh, that's the right choice. He's got two yellows, one on each side, Kirsch. He's been playing this game for about 10 years now, Alan. In fact, when he was 10 years of age, his family bought a snooker table and had it put in his house. So that's what he learned to play on, as did most of these players, I believe. But he represented Wales in 1997 in the internationals. But he's starting to look very nervy indeed. In play. And those are mistakes he just can't afford. Well, he is a superstitious character. He's got his lucky shirt on. His lucky socks on. Indeed, the ones he got married in last year. I hope he's washed them since, by the way. So he has a superstitious streak in him. And one feels now McKenna's in the groove. There'll be no more mistakes. Just want to pot this red, play the one over the pocket, off the side cushion for the red top left. The beauty of being such a brilliant potter like McKenna is you've got so much more space for the white. When you're nervous of the long pots, you try and get close to the balls, as McKenna has in fact done. Starting to shine is the Welsh star. Down goes the eight, the fourth frame on the spin. Many of McKenna's supporters in the crowd, and they'll be delighted the way the champion has turned this one around. He leads Phil Grundy now by four frames to two in this best of 17 quarterfinal. Seventh frame, Rob McKenna's break, leading four frames to two. Breaking off. Frame seven, and once again, the break is deserted, McKenna. But the way that he started to play now, and now he's turned things around, <coughs> have to put him in good stead. Red ball's in play. Grundy's chosen the red balls. Over the top corner pocket, you'll notice there's a red with a yellow behind it. That's Grundy's saviour. Even if he doesn't clear, McKenna's not going to be able to clear up. liked a little bit more top on that ball. Ideally, he would have liked to play the ball along the top cushion onto the red by the yellow. Still a good shot down the cushion, though. He needs something to try and re-establish that confidence that he started this match out with. Oh, good shot, that one. That's opened the door for him here. You see again the plant. The only real problem ball now is possibly the eight ball. Good position from the last red to the eight is going to be the key to whether or not he's going to take the frame at this visit. And it's not going to be easy. Just having a look right now, how he wants to weigh it up. He needs a lot of angle on this last red. And he's done that. And really, he can come into an area in here to leave the eight ball into the middle pocket. 
down below the yellows. He must be careful if he strikes those yellows that he doesn't hide the white ball behind them. Looks perfect to me. Good positional shot, that one. This eight. And he's pulled one back. Phil Grundy trailing by just one frame now in this quarterfinal. It's a race to nine. And McKenna leads four frames to three. Again to the televised stages here at the Stackus Hotel in Blackpool for the Embassy okay, Whirlpool five Championships of 1998. Leading five frames to three. So the reigning champion breaks off here in frame nine. I'm sure the predominant feeling, one of relief. Open tight. After sniping that last one, when it looked like he had tossed it away. So Phil Grundy just trailing by two frames at 5-3 in this best of 17 quarter final. Will be eager to try and make amends. Come on, Robbie. Open title. Still an open table. You've got to believe that Reds might be the ball of choice for McKenna here. This was a bad miss from Grundy because it allows McKenna still to choose the suit of colors that he prefers. And vice versa. Open tight. Bad miss. Looked for a minute like it was going to drop. Big Balls opening in now and a big chance for Phil Grundy. This obviously the highlight of his career in terms of playing pool. His debut on television. In fact, his debut at the later stages of any event of any note. <coughs> and what he's looking at now He's getting a good position at the bottom of the table, somewhere around the spot, so that he can take the red ball into the center. And at some stage, he needs to drop on the one difficult red, which is tied up with the three yellows. He will try and leave a little angle on the red into the center, just drop behind that ball. He's put all his eggs in one basket if he's going to take the one in the corner first. How important is it right now for Grundy to not give McKenna another chance in this one? Once again, a look at the shot. Not the best positional shot that Phil Grundy's going to play, but he's got to feel a sense of urgency right now. He may be too straight on that ball. Well, he may be able to just follow through and leave the cue ball in the area of where the yellow is nearest the right-hand middle. Just in this area. And that's going to leave the red to the bottom, bottom corner. Not an easy shot. That was the better option. He's a little closer to this last red. Good imagination there from Phil Grundy. That was a difficult shot, but it availed much better positional rewards. Still, he's not out of the woods, Alan. Tough position to the eight ball here from this red. He's got to drop this ball in gently or screw off the side cushion, being careful not to pot the yellow into the corner. And that's the problem. That's a disastrous finish. Total snooker. Just, Just before this match, Jim, we were on the table and we were looking at the way the balls were coming off the side cushion. With it been a new cloth, the balls just come a little wider. 
and what you'd expect once they've been played on for a while. Now when he hits the side cushion he's going to have to take this into account. And it'll be so easy to slide past this black ball. Well the right hand side cushion doesn't look like it's available Alan. 30 seconds. So possibly he's looking at the two cushion escape. Foul. Two visits. Well, he's elected the intentional foul and awarded the two visits to McKenna, not giving him an easy starting yellow. Or at least he didn't think he did. A bit careless. Once again, the speed of the table found him, how, found him out there. He meant to sit behind the yellow, left the plant into the centre, and now it's all child's play for McKenna. And you do get the feeling that a 6 3 lead is going to be very difficult to pull back. Just slightly hampered by the 8, so he'll draw back off this yellow. Still got two visits, remember. Second visit. Good thinking that by McKenna. He didn't take a chance and go down for the yellow with one visit. He's made short work of this one. A careless positional effort from Phil Grundy has been very costly and McKenna starting to inch ever closer to the finish line here. He leads Bill Grundy now by six frames to three in the race to nine. Once again, McKenna escapes the trap. I'm sure there was a time when he didn't feel like he was going to be getting out of his chair. But a little bit careless there from Phil Grundy, leaving the plant into the center, and he didn't come down and have a look at it. And that proved his undoing. And in the end, it was a simple eight ball to put pay to frame nine. And, frame. and now in frame ten, Grundy breaks off here. He needs this yellow to drop. Oh, the last ball, the last ball moving on the table trickles into the corner pocket. Just watch this yellow ball. So it hits the top cushion, comes all, all the way down. All the other balls have just about stopped. Great shot there from Phil. Little unfortunate not to have landed on an easier yellow. But he's still in a very commanding position here. He's got control of the table. He's got the two yellow balls over the bottom corner pocket. Another good pot. Starting to manufacture shots now is Phil Grundy. Great shot, this one. Nice steady cueing arm. <coughs> Usually a sign of success. The cue action is very steady. And this frame is all going to be about these two yellows together. At some stage he's going to be looking at potting one of them and nudging the other one out. 30 seconds. Another good pot wants to just leave a little angle in potting this yellow. The one nearest the bottom left corner, he wants to try and disturb the one that's tied up. And that looks perfect. So it's all on this shot right now. If he finishes on the last yellow, what a visit this is from Phil Grundy. He needs a bit of fortune, or he's got to flick it very gently. Otherwise, it'll just go too far, this yellow. Well, he's tried to pull out into the red, and it wasn't really on that shot. And I think his best option is to 
nudge the red onto the yellow and cover the pocket with the yellow. He can't afford to clear the pocket for McKenna. Just needs a deft touch. Great balls to play. Well, he's accomplished that, Alan, but he's really just buying himself time because he's going to be in trouble his next visit. And if that red comes over far enough to take the bottom cushion as we look away, and it might well have done that, all of a sudden the hit here on the yellow isn't a formality. And there you can see the situation. He's looking at getting out of the snooker. The option he should be taking is to move the red over the center pocket. If he nudges that down to the bottom corner 30 seconds. and nudges the yellow over the pocket, McKenna has got two red balls he can't pot, even though he has got two visits. Well, he's not taking your advice, Alan, so we'll see if he lives to regret it. Foul. Two visits. Two visits awarded. That's the second time that we've seen Phil Grundy elect the intentional foul. It was very costly in the last frame. Let's see what happens here. He played his own version of a containing shot. And it's no good just putting the balls on the cushion against McKenna. He's playing this red very early. If he misses this double, he could be under pressure. How good a shot's that? Well, I said earlier in this broadcast how exciting it is to watch a player that really goes after his shots, plays with a lot of confidence, and Rob McKenna exudes that. And he's well aware that after playing this red ball along the top cushion, he can play the one along the side cushion and drop onto the red into the middle. And that's perfect. It's one thing to talk a good game. It's another to be able to back it up. And I think few would disagree that McKenna can back it up. Well, I suppose that's why we're sat here, Jim. We haven't missed one today, have we? Once again, Phil Grundy with the wrong choice of shots and never got another chance. The reigning Embassy World Pool champion, Rob McKenna, storming on for a place into the semifinals. He leads Phil Grundy from Wales by seven frames to three. So McKenna now breaking off here, frame 11, just two frames away from an emphatic victory over a countryman, an outsider, some would say. But I've got a feeling we're going to be seeing a little bit more of Phil Grundy in tournaments to come. But right now, the man of the moment, Rob McKenna. It's a different Rob McKenna to earlier in the match. Yellow balls in play. Yes, would you have taken a 7-3 scoreline when he was 2 nil down. I think he'd have taken a 7-5 scoreline. You see that McKenna doesn't move the white ball very far. The minimum of travel on the white ball. He's such a good cueist, obviously with a snooker background. He's the sort of player that can beat you with so many weapons in his artillery. We saw the bank shot in the last frame. He controls the white so well, and he's obviously one of the best potters in eight ball pool that the world has ever seen. Well, yet another example of what McKenna can do when he's motoring. He just requires one frame now. He leads Phil Grundy by eight frames to three. And this has to be saying something to the rest of the players in this event.
McKenna said he felt like he was the player to beat. He was playing Both better right. than anyone that he had Both seen. Right. And he's doing nothing to dispel that. With no disrespect to uh, Phil Grundy, he was expected to win this match. He's had his chances, Phil Grundy. But in the most part, he's given them back to McKenna. And he may well have played his last shot in this tournament. Because as we can see, the one bad or awkward yellow does go into the center, past the red. Going about his business here is McKenna. I'd like to have just gone a little further with that white ball. It didn't look possible to pot that yellow ball into the corner. Obviously it was. This eight. And a resounding victory for Rob McKenna, and he nods his head. A very happy man. But certainly condolences to Phil Grundy as he gets a kiss from his mother. Rob McKenna defending his title admirably here. He's through to the semifinals. And we're back now to the studio where Keith Brewer awaits Jonathan Green. Thank you, Jim. Yes, an emphatic win there by the world champion. And I think, uh, well, an excellent effort by Phil. He did win the first two frames, but I think the turning point had to be at 5-3, where he followed on and went on to win the match. Brilliant stuff by the world champion. With me, watching very closely, of course, Keith Brewer. And, uh, well, we said earlier that he is an impressive uh, player, but he proved it today, didn't he? Yeah, and um, you've got to remember that Rob kind of is like the best player in the world on that eight-foot table, and I think he showed why today. You could meet him in the semi-final if you can get you through your game with uh, Robert Brady. What are your thoughts on that? I'm going to take one match at a time. I think I've got a very difficult game with Robert, and I think I'll just concentrate on that. But should I get through, obviously it would be a big thrill to play uh, the world champion in the semi-final. Any worries about that match with Robert? Well, obviously you do worry because, like I said, I mean, to me, he's kind of the best player on the eight-foot table, and I'm not really the greatest lover of that bigger table. But um, if you're going to be world champion and you've got to play the best, you've got to beat the best, and uh, I would relish the opportunity to do so. All right, well, Robert McKenna is through to the semi-finals. Keith Brewer, as we just said, is playing up against Robert Brady in our next match here on Sky Sports. That's it for now, though, from all of us in Blackpool. Until